Right, so we're going to do a short video on assessing tree safety in the context of putting up a rope swing. Now, this is just a very basic tree assessment. Um, it's not going to tell you the exact safety of a tree, and if you have any doubts, please contact your local arborist and get a tree liability survey done. So when you're looking for your perfect tree swing site, one thing to think about is the gradient. If you've got perfectly flat gradient, you'll find that it's much harder to swing and you're gonna catch your feet on the ground. If you have a little bit of a slope, like we have here, then we get a nice swing as we come up. And it also makes it much easier to get on and off the swing while still getting a good swing. So to do a basic visual safety check, once I've found the tree that I want, so I've found a good oak tree or a good beech tree and I think it's in the perfect place, it's got a nice swinging arc and the perfect shape in, then I'm gonna do a visual safety check. And I'm gonna start at the top of the tree and I'm gonna see, does the crown look healthy? Is there any big bits of dead wood in there, any snapped out limbs? What we don't want is anything up there that can fall down on the children when they're swinging. Um, and then I'm gonna work my way down the tree. Are there, is there any fungus in the tree? Um, are there any V-shaped unions where they come together like that and it looks like there's wood joined together? Um, what I want to see is nice strong U-shaped unions in the tree. And then I'm gonna follow the tree down and look at the trunk and the base. And are there any fungus around the base of the tree attached to it? Well, you might see a line of fungus, especially with armillaria, honey fungus. You'll see these lines of mushrooms coming away from the tree and they're running along the root system of the tree. So just having a good search around the base of the tree, maybe moving any leaf litter to just make sure there's no fungus at the base. And then I'm gonna have a look at the root plate. Is there any signs of heave? Does it pull up on one side? Or sometimes, if it's windy, you can see breathing. The ground seems to go up and down, like the ground's actually breathing. It looks really cool, but it's not a good idea to put a swing in that kind of tree. Um, and then I wanna look to make sure there's no damage to the root system, there's no concrete or anything poured on top of it. Um, so that it's nice and clear and it looks like a healthy tree. No large cavities in the tree, that's also important. Um, and that there's no basal movement. Sometimes on a windy day, uh, you might see the bottom three or four feet of the tree moving. That's a big indicator that that tree's not safe. The top can move around as much as it likes. That's absolutely fine. Just as long as that base is nice and stable and sturdy and there's no movement in the ground. Now, maybe it's not a windy day and there are still clues that that's unsafe. You might see fresh soil that's been pushed up through movement. Um, or like I said earlier, heave, where just one side of the tree's pulled up more than the rest. Or you might be able to get your hands underneath the roots uh, where there's pockets that have been formed. Creaking, it, it's a really good idea to listen to the tree as well. Creaking is an indication of rubbing, which normally indicates infection and therefore a possible weakness in the tree. Also look out for bark cracking on the limb or any large bulges or pointed bark. These are all signs of potential weaknesses in the tree. I would normally look on the branch that I was looking at putting the swing on or any hazard beams that could be above the swing. If it's on the other side of the tree, these may not be problems. Again, if there's any uh, concerns, please just contact an arborist. Although earlier I said that the centre of the tree is mainly inactive tissue, there are in a healthy tree a few living cells that help keep the timber moist. When a tree is under stress, these cells can die, of which can cause internal fractures in the wood. Sometimes these will make it to the surface as either holes or scar tissue or a pronounced ridge in the bark. That is the triangle shape that you might see on the wood. So just look out for any of that sort of stuff before you put a swing in a tree. With unions, um, there's some quite important things to know about the unions. And a union is, if you imagine the stem of a tree, the main trunk that comes up, then we have primary branches. They're the first branches that come off of that. And then you'll have secondary branches that come off of that. So what's really important is, as the trunk comes up, that primary branch is normally where you're going to put your swing. It's that first big branch that comes off the bottom of the trunk. And what's really important, we call this aspect ratio, 
that branch must not be the same thickness as the trunk. Ideally, you want it about a half or a third, but the smaller the branch is compared to that trunk, the stronger the union is. And then we have two different types of union, which I mentioned earlier. We've got the V-shaped union, which normally has an inclusion. And what this is, is if you've got your main stem that comes up, that primary branch that comes off of it, if it runs up next to it so that they look like they come up together and it's got a tight V like this, um, the wood here is not joined together and it rubs and infection can get in it and they're prone to splitting out to tearing apart so we're, they're considered weak unions and you'd never want to put any stress on a branch that has one of those v-shaped weak unions what we're looking for is a good u-shaped union that means there's a nice u between the two branches um, or it might come out this way but there's still a nice u here um, and that means that the wood is not joining together. It means that there's no inclusion between the two barks and that's a much stronger shape. So whenever I was looking for a swing or anything that's got to support any weight, I would be looking for a U shape and not a V shape. I would always stay clear of a V shape union. So with regards to fungus, just because you see a little bit of fungus on the end of a bit of, a, end of, a bit of dead branch, doesn't mean that that tree is in a poor state of health um, but there are certain funguses which are a sign that the tree is in a state of failure Ganoderma apollinatum they're big brackets that come out of the side of the tree and it's a white rot fungus that is eating the inside of the tree so generally a, a tree could still be safe but generally if i saw a tree uh, with Ganoderma on it i wouldn't choose to put a swing in it um, the other one is honey fungus. Because it eats the tree from the inside, um, you might not always notice it, but you can normally peel back the bark with honey fungus and you'll see lacing. It's like this black lacy stuff that goes up the inside of the bark. That's a good sign that you've got honey fungus in that tree because the mushrooms aren't often there for that long. Um, so it's not always easy to tell just by the mushrooms that that tree has a problem with honey fungus. Um, so if the bark's looking flaky, there's a good, si good sign that that tree um, is in a state of failure and it's probably best not to put a swing up in that tree. Cretchumeria, brittle cinder fungus, actually consumes the lignin and the cellulose of trees and so makes them extremely brittle. And on top of that, it can be very elusive to find. So this is one that you must be extra vigilant for. When initially fruiting, you may notice its wavy silver brackets, but they soon turn black and like to hide in crevices. Other clues might be lots of snapped out dead wood below the tree. Hoof fungus, Fomes formentarius, another white rock bracket, which should normally be quite obvious in a tree and actually has other interesting uses for us, but a swinging tree is not one of them. The other fungus that's worth being aware of is Inonotus hispidus or shaggy bracket fungus. Um, it's quite often found higher up in the crown in ash trees and it's a yellow fungus and um, it can actually reduce the structural integrity very quickly of a tree. Um, so it's obviously look up, check the crown of a tree and it stands out because it is like a luminescent yellow. So, so generally, a as a rule, you should be able to take a stick and knock around the base of the tree and if it sounds hollow then leave that tree well alone um, if it sounds pretty solid and there's no massive brackets and there's no lacing in it um, then generally that tree should be okay hazard beams this is when there are banana splits that travel through the wood Trees use lignin, a strong but brittle component to deal with compaction forces, or cellulose, a flexible but weaker material to deal with flexion. It will produce these substances relative to the forces it has experienced over its lifetime. So if for some reason it experiences opposite forces, it can cause torsional fractures. These appear as big banana splits through the centre of the wood. This may be caused because there was a tree or building or other structure that was stopping wind from hitting the tree in a particular direction. And when that structure's moved, 
then all of a sudden it is exposed to forces that it hasn't had to deal through with through its life. Swings can, although it's unlikely, also cause these by putting opposite rotation onto the branch. Also look at the lever arm. This is the length of your intended branch chosen for the swing in relation to the tree. If the branch seems excessively long, it is already supporting a lot of weight at the union and may end up being a victim of its own success. I have seen it before where a branch goes out a long way and then suddenly makes a right angle turn upwards to find the light. As you can imagine, this is a long arm supporting a lot of weight at the end of it and would not be suitable for a tree swing. So we've had a look at assessing the safety of the tree to protect the people involved. Um, so let's just have a look at how we can protect the tree's health. Um, most of the living tissue of a tree is actually just that thin cambium layer on the outside of the tree. Most of the inner wood um, is inactive tissue, so it's not alive. Um, so if we've got a rope that's going backwards and forwards over that cambium layer, it really doesn't take long to cause damage to that tree. And especially if it's on the top of the branch and you've got all your weight coming down on that side um, and you've got a big dead zone where that swing's been, then you know, you're know you creating a potential hazard for the future. Um, so there's a few ways that we can try and deal with that. One is to use a cambium saver, which is a strap that goes over the top of the tree, and then the rope goes through that, we'll show you later. Um, and that will reduce the amount of friction on the cambium. The other one is, you can put a bit of hose pipe over your rope, or you can use the inner, inner tube of a bike, um, and again, that'll do the same thing, it just reduces the friction on the tree. Um, like I said earlier, if you're using an oak tree or something with a thicker bark, um, then the tree is naturally protecting itself, uh, certainly if it's a short term use. If the swing is going to stay up for any length of time, then please look at other options. So with regards to putting a swing up in a tree, it's really important that we take that swing down when we're finished and we don't leave it up there for too long. So once you've put the swing up for the day, please take it down afterwards. It's not best practice to leave anything up in a tree. It can cause damage to the tree. Your equipment can be damaged and you don't know. Um, so it's just really important that you remove that swing after you've used it. Don't leave it in the tree for more than a day um, and get it out there. And when we show you how to put it up, you'll realize how quick and easy you can get a swing in a tree so there's really no excuse to leave it up there.